Oh, you know what the number one killer of conversions is? No, not the title. Confusion. Do not make me think. If I'm thinking, I'm not acting. If I see that buy now box, I want to make a reflex. I don't want to have to think, what is it? All right, can you guys hear me? You guys like full from all the awesome information today? <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to talk about. How I use SEO tips and tricks and tactics to really, really, really push lots of traffic to my Amazon listings without resorting to discounts or rebates or anything like that. All kinds of fun stuff. Here we go. Now, three things, three main things I want to cover. Number one, social listening. For me, I'm not the person that's going to find a product and then try to find an audience for that product. I'm the other way. I want to know what people really want before I spend money trying to sell them something. All right? So we're going to find some untapped gold mines there in both products and keywords that people aren't looking at. Really, really, really easy. All right? The second thing how to use keywords like long tail keywords and content to drive traffic that your competition is not touching. And you can build value in the customer's minds well before you make them an offer. And number three, how do we make a listing that converts higher? It's one thing to drive traffic, but I want to make sure that whatever traffic I'm driving, I get the most out of them. And it's actually pretty simple. So here we go. All right, so first, what is social listening? Most people may or may not have heard about it. It's usually kind of one of the outlier terms in marketing. But I want to monitor social channels so I can find out what people really, really, really want. It's not just about finding a product and the, 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 the numbers line up on some product search site like Helium 10 or Viral Launch or something like that. I want to get inside people's heads. If I know what you really value, then I know what you really can be controlled by, what you're really going to engage with. Think about this as an example. If I'm going to sell maybe a sleep aid, well, what would be the value in that sleep aid? A better night's sleep? No. I want to aim that at the middle-aged mom that wishes she had more energy to play with her kids. How do you find that out? You go and read their conversations. Lots of fun. If you go on a product research platform, friends, and you see a product, and you say, okay, this product looks great, has lots of sales, but maybe it has some competition. Or maybe by the time you get it made, it will have lots of competition, because if you can find it, so can everybody else. That's going to be more competition, more copycats, higher cost of doing business. That's us all going on YouTube when we started Amazon and saying, you got to find a product and differentiate. Do you know what would happen to me if I said I'm going to spend thousands of dollars speculating on the demand of a product without talking to the actual consumer base and digging inside their minds? My missus would skin me. So we need to find out what people want that isn't being provided yet. If I go on Amazon and I see some good sales numbers, I'm on the, I'm, I'm on the right, right path. I'm on the right path. But that demand is already being met. That's what those numbers represent. Instead of saying, if I change it this way, maybe that'll be a good seller. Maybe? I don't want to maybe with my money. All right? So how are we going to find out all this wonderful information? There's three magic questions you need to ask. Three magic questions. That's it. If you can do this, you're good to go. Number one, where does my potential audience hang out? Where do they hang out? Where online can I dig inside their minds? Where can I read their conversations? Where can I see how they're reacting to different influencers and thought leaders online? Number two, what theme or hobby within the niche that I want to sell in are they enthusiasts about? Whoa. Guys, enthusiasts are the people that have passion pursuits. They do activities. They buy things to help them with those activities. They share with other people. They talk about what works and what doesn't. I want to know that information. That's going to help me figure out 
how to make a better offer to people, how to make a better product feature, how to find out what keywords they're searching that my competitors don't know about. How do you do this? Well, you got to be a chameleon. Pretty simple. Go to a Facebook group. Why did Facebook change the algorithm to where on your phone now, instead of just being a news feed, it's more group focused? Because that's how most people are using the platform. Guys, I want you to think about something. There are a few things that we as human beings cannot stand. One of them is isolation. We want to find people who like what we like. Facebook groups, pretty straightforward. Go and join, read the conversations. Why can't you ask them, hey guys, uh, I'm thinking about you know, something like this product over here, my competitor's product, <laughs> but I was looking to see if maybe any of you could find something that had this too. One of two things is gonna happen. If that's your product idea, they're gonna say, we tried that already, that was no good. Before I've even spent any money. Or they're gonna say, whoa, I didn't even think about that. If you find something like that, let me know. Aha. Great path to start developing an idea for a product. Use people's conversations. Facebook groups are focus groups. Listen to what people have to say. Read their conversations. It's pretty straightforward. Poke around in there. The other thing that you can do is you can learn what long tail keywords they're using. What special, you know, accessory or ingredient or word that's very descriptive are they using to hunt for the products that they're buying as part of their enthusiasm for whatever niche it is. Because guess what that's going to do? It's going to give you more long tails to run in your Amazon PPC. What are long tails? High buying intent, less volume, which means they're not as attractive to your competition. I like, I like words that convert much higher. Give me a whole bunch of those, especially if they're not going to be as competitive, because most people aren't thinking about them. Now, if we're going to talk about keywords like that, I want you guys to wrap your brain around what I call peripheral keywords versus targeted keywords. Okay? And this is where we're going to go into keyword expansion. How to find more keywords to use for your campaigns, and how to find more ideas to build an audience with content. Guys, if you think of this like a dartboard, bullseye right in the middle, that is a targeted keyword. People that go on Amazon generally know what they're searching for. If I'm, if I'm selling a sleep aid, that long tail on the bottom, valerian root sleep aid, that is a very, very active ingredient in most of the sleep aid supplements that you'll find on Amazon. Sure. But that's what people are searching for on Amazon. If I know what I call peripheral keywords, the things that people are searching for on Google or on social media before they've made the, they, they've made the decision that this product is the best solution for their problem, that's a whole lot less expensive. And now I can use some of those peripheral keywords to draw people in before they even get to the Amazon platform, before they make product comparisons, before they may have a product in their mind. Very simple to make content like that. We'll talk about that in a little while. And if I do that, what else, what else am I doing? I'm spending very, very little money to get people into my funnel. Now, this is a picture of what we call the buyer's journey. If you're selling things online, you've, you've seen something like this before. Usually it's a funnel. Guys, if you're selling anything, your only job is to get people from strangers to engaged to bought. Now, as you'll find, most of your ad spend goes to getting people to notice your listing, attention capture. If it's Facebook ads, if it's Amazon PPC, if it's Google ads, cold traffic, getting people to say, who are they? I'm interested in what they have to say. That's the most expensive part. So if we can minimize that relative to our competition, who's going to start owning that product niche? Let's talk about more. Let's use an example. Here are some fabric resistance bands on Amazon, right? You put in fabric resistance bands, this is one of the listings on the first page, and they're one of the highest priced. Why? Anything special about them? 
Maybe it might be the customer acquisition strategy. So how do we expand our keywords if we're using this as an example listing? What are some things we can do to get more keyword ideas to test? Well, if you go to Google, one of my favorite extensions on Google is called Keywords Everywhere. If you put in a search with Keywords Everywhere as your Chrome plugin, you'll pay about a penny for 100 search term suggestions. And it gives you the volume per month on Google search, and it's gonna give you the average CPC. Put in fabric resistance bands, it's gonna give me some on the side. It's also going to give me the words people also searched for. So if I take my highest converting search terms, or if I take my highest volume terms from Amazon, why wouldn't I search those on Google to get the suggestions? Oh, that's a fun idea. Now, if you're not into a paid plugin, it's not that expensive, that's okay. Go to ads.google.com, go to the Google Keyword Planner. It's a free tool. You can put in all these words. You can put in broad you know, interest words, you can put in long tail words, whatever you want, it's a free tool. It's on Google. It's what you use when you wanna start setting up AdWords. Not gonna to go too deep into that. But, put in fabric resistance bands, it's gonna give me a bunch of suggestions. The more words I put in, the more suggestions I'm going to get. You see where I'm going with this? So now I can figure out what are gonna be my targeted keywords, what's gonna have volume worth pursuing, and what are the things that I need to do? What are the phrases people are searching for so that I can start leading them in maybe with content? Get them to my Facebook group. Get them on my blog. Get a hold of them before they go to Amazon. Guys, if you are only running things on Amazon, you are renting customers. Just like some of the other speakers talked about. If you still have access to name and all that other info, get all of those fulfilled order reports because it's going away. I would rather own my customers. If I'm spending the money on advertising, I want to own the customer. Now, another tool you can use, LSI Graph. This is one of my favorites. I can put in any keyword I want. It will give me the other relevant keywords for that keyword that surround it, that are also found on you know, Google searches. And I can get the Google Trends data. Why is that important? I can get a, I can get a spreadsheet around the keyword Maybe it's my competitor's brand name and find out the seasonality of a keyword. That's kind of strong. The other cool thing about it is it will bring up all the top performing content relative to that keyword. So if you want to have a customer acquisition strategy to where you start bringing people in, what are people engaging with? Can I spin that? Pretty easy. Now, last thing, if we use this example, let's say the fabric bands were one of my competitors. I can go on Google, I can type in my competitor's brand name and my keyword, and if you look on the end of the search there, it's called a search modifier. People don't use these enough. If I put this in, minus site colon Amazon.com, realistically what I just did is I said, where are these people other than Amazon? Where are they other than Amazon? And it spits out the fact that, oh, they have a website and they have multiple Instagram influencers moving, and they have a YouTube channel, and they have YouTube influencers, and they're on about 15 different uh, you know, fitness review sites. Huh. And they're charging at least twice as much as everybody else on the first page. Because they own their audience. Because they control how people are looking at the solutions to their problems. And the other cool thing that I want you to think about as far as customer acquisition and running content is, well, like I said earlier, if people are product seeking, that means that at some point they had to research that. What questions are they asking to figure out that my product might be right for them or another person's product might be right for them? You want to find that out? Go to answerthepublic.com. Look at that. I put in resistance bands. This is a tool you can use three or four times a day for free. And what it spits out are Google searches people are asking relative to your main keywords. Look at that. I have 130 different questions people are asking around resistance bands. 
Now, are those targeted keywords that are product-oriented? No. But what, is else, what else does that mean? That means they're a whole lot less competitive. They cost a lot less to target. If I'm running something like AdWords, or if I'm going to write a blog, or if I'm going to run content, I'm run Facebook ads to build my Facebook page. Now, if I have 130 different questions that people are asking, well, none of those have to do with actually selling something, do they? But if I can make a piece of content for each one of those, and now I have all these people continually coming to my page, what have I done? i become a thought leader. If you get people with just a little bit of content to continually come to you over and over and over again on your page, or on your Facebook page, or on your Instagram, what are you doing? You're not paying as much per customer. You're not having to fight for the same pool of customers as everybody else on the Amazon platform selling something similar when people put in their search term. And the other cool thing is your engineering behavioral addiction. I'm dead serious. I do it all the time. If I get you to continually come to me over and over and over again because I am giving you valuable information to take you further into your passion pursuit and I always have something new for you, I'm building a relationship right under your nose. It's your idea to come to me. And when I make an offer, guess what? Who are you more open to as far as a product suggestion? Hi, how you doing? It was your idea to believe me. Why is that? Because I gave you all that valuable information. I touched you. I made it your idea. I drew you in. This is a free resource to use all of that. Make a little bit of content. And that way, when you get people into your funnel, you can build retargeting audiences off of all those people. And the other cool thing is when you want to launch something, if you have a list moving, they're ready to go. Because I do this all the time. As far as a launch strategy goes, build a list with content, keep them moving. And when it's time to party, there you go. I build Facebook groups around a niche, around a product idea that I've started maybe as a sample. I'll get my samples and ask my Facebook group, hey, just want to get some feedback on this. I know you guys were talking about this, so we decided to make something. I want to see what your thoughts are. One of two things is going to happen. You give it to a few people in the group that are your highest participators, they're going to come back with feedback and say, hey, this is fantastic. I can't wait for you to make these. Why is it important that they do that versus you? Because crowd mentality. If, if you know, all their peers like it, they're probably going to like it too. Or they're going to come back and they're going to say, didn't like it. It's missing this, this, this. Oh, cool. We'll try again. We'll make the customers part of the process before I spend tons of money on inventory I'm not sure is going to sell. Different way of thinking about it. So in other words, I've spent a lot less money on bringing people in. And I've spent a lot more money on my warm audience, my higher converting people. People that have already engaged with me. People that already know that they like me. More profits. And guys, if you're like me when you started all this, figuring out cash flow and keeping profits was a really big problem to solve. Yeah? Okay. Now, if we're going to bring people to our Amazon listings, or if we're going to bring people into our content, what's the number one conversion killer on any Amazon listing? Does anybody have any idea what it is? Yes, no, maybe? What is it? The images that you put out. No. Customer reviews. No. You know what the number one killer of conversions is? No, not the title. Confusion. Do not make me think. If I'm thinking, I'm not acting. If I see that buy now box, I want to make a reflex. I don't want to have to think, what is it? Right? Guys, with your Amazon listings, your pictures, your title, your description should be self-evident. It should be obvious what it is. Don't make them think. People don't buy what they don't understand. You know how close your competitors are to your listing? Back. Back is the most used button on the internet, friends, especially on Amazon. All right? Don't make them think. If they're thinking, 
It doesn't feel good. I want you to think about something right now. If I said, what's two plus two? It's a reflex. You say, four. How do you feel when I say, what's 17 times 138? You go, ah, what was that? If they're looking at your Amazon listing and doing that, you lost them. You lost them. All right? Confusion kills conversions. Pretty simple. Your job is to get rid of question marks. They've already decided, once they've gotten to the Amazon platform, what kind of product they're looking for. They're at the bottom of the funnel. That's why your conversion rates are, are somewhere around 20% for a lot of listings or more. You're not going to get that on a regular e-com site because people trust the Amazon platform. They already know they want something. Don't make it confusing. I'm going to show you an example. Before I get to the example, caught my slide here. <laughs> Guys, if you're a marketer, if you're a seller, what are you always doing? You're always optimizing, aren't you? I've got to optimize my search term reports, I've got to optimize my listing, and I've got to optimize my photos, and I've got to get my packaging right. And now after Zach's talk, I've got to get my, uh, my groovy insert cards right. Credit to Zach on that one. You guys get the idea. Your customers don't shop that way. They do not shop that way. When you go to Amazon, you know the, the abouts of what you're looking for. You're going to find the first thing that you think matches that and that also has the least opportunity of being awful when it arrives, and you're going to buy it. That's how it works. That's why page one is so important, right? Think about that. All the things we bought on Amazon, unless it was like a big name, something like a Nike or a Sony, how many of you remember the actual buyer that you bought it from? Not many. Why? Because you bought the thing that wasn't maybe necessarily super perfect and that you spent hours figuring out down to like the letter. You bought what you thought would work. Less confusion. So instead of writing novels on your listings, write billboards. That's what I want you to do. Guys, when people come to your listings, they are not going to read them. They're not going to read them. They can't figure out what's going on by reading a big book. They don't have that kind of time. It's like they're going by at 100 kilometers an hour. They're going to scan it and say, I understand what that is. Here's a usability test for you. Do you know how Google decides if they're going to show a web page to the public? Here's the Google test. The engineers will set up a web page. They'll bring somebody in from another department, that person stands 10 feet away from a monitor, and they have one second to say, it does that. That's what I'm supposed to do. If it's not absolutely self-evident, scrap it, start over. That's how serious they are, and that's why they own search. When you go to Google, you know exactly what to do. There's no confusion. It's self-evident. When you go to Yahoo, you got sports scores and stories and like the weather and search. You don't know where to go. Don't make your Amazon listing like that. All right? So if we go back to this monster, ugh, fabric resistance bands, and there's all that text. Okay? But why? Why do we have a listing that's actually really high converting with all that text on it? On the Amazon platform, all the listings look the same. And you got to get what keywords in you can because you want to rank for more keywords. But is that really self-evident, aside from the awesome picture as to what this is and what you get? Not compared, to, not compared to the other assets. If you look at their website, whoo, fabric brands that never roll or break guaranteed, done. That's a whole lot more self-evident. And oh, look, the social proof. I don't even have to scroll down. I know exactly what I'm here for. I can make a split-second decision. I like that or back. So if you go to their product page on their website, Oh, doesn't that look relatively similar to this ugly monster in format? Oh, oh my. You got the stars, you got the bullets. But if you notice, it's a whole lot less confusing, isn't it? With the bullets, you notice there's white space around them. Guys, when you make your descriptions in your bullets, keep them shorter. Use the white space around them to frame people's eyes so it's easier to scan. Every question mark and every bit of like cognitive workload you give people, you're killing your conversion. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right? So we want this, not that. 
Does that make sense? So for takeaways, just to kind of bring it all back here, if I can go on social media, if I can go on Google, if I can go on places like Answer the Public, and I can find what questions people are asking, I can find unique value propositions, I can find out what they really want out of the products they're using. I can find out what their, what their enthusiasts are using as accessories. All the things you've heard about today, affiliate offers and digital products and everything else. Yeah, how do you know which ones are gonna work with your product? Go listen, it's pretty easy. Facebook groups are focus groups. You can read people's conversations, you can ask them. They will tell you everything you wanna know. All right? It's pretty easy. Beyond that, if I can find longer tail keywords, I can find less competitive, higher intent keywords to use when I want to direct people to my product, or I can use peripheral keywords to bring people to my blog or my page. And if I can build that trust, can't I then send them to my Amazon listing? Some of you are connecting the dots, some of you are not. If I do that, I want you to think about something. I have given people a reason to engage with me and made it their idea without having to talk about an offer or a product uh, discount at all. Think about that. If I run content and I bring people to my Facebook group or my, my blog page or my store or whatever it is with the link to my Amazon listing, I've given them value by helping them further their passion pursuit and I've given them a reason to come to my store that has nothing to do with price. I haven't given up that power. So when I want to launch, I go to the audience first. I build a list, and then all of a sudden, when it's time to go, so here we go, off you go, and they'll buy every single time because I built that relationship first, and it does not take long. The minute I start talking about this, everybody says, oh my gosh, it takes like six months. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Guys, I have an email list moving. My opt-in, without offering a product discount or anything like that, I'm pushing 29 cents an email, and I have over 500 emails a week coming in, and over 200 comments on my site per brand every week. And so when I want to launch, I just email my list. If any of you were running Facebook ads on Black Friday, what happened? Shopify crashed, Facebook crashed. What happened on Prime Day in 2018 on Amazon in the US? Amazon crashed. Hey, guess what? If you have a list, if you have people that are already part of your, your deal, does that really matter to you? No. If you have a list, if you have people that are engaged, and Amazon says, we're going to suspend your listing. Have fun with that. You go, that's cute. They're mine. <laughs> See where I'm going with this? And the last thing is, confusion kills conversions. Make it easier for people to understand what you're talking about and what your product does. The more you make them think, the less they're going to buy. That's the effort people want to put into buying anything, especially with Amazon. Buy box, one-day delivery, two-day delivery, I'm done. Make sense? Yeah? All right. That's that. If you want more from me, I have a Facebook group, Unstoppable FBA, and that is my email. Uh, there are three questions at the front of the Facebook group. Say that you saw me at Seller World Conference, because <laughs> I have tons and tons of people that apply for this, but that's how you get a hold of me. If you want to get a hold of me, email me, join the group, ask questions. I'll be happy to help you with any of the things I talked about. Um, I'm, I'm pretty transparent and pretty open about all of it and all the process. So uh, there you go, and thank you very, very much. All right, ready for some questions? Sure. Let's do it. All right, the first one. Long bullet descriptions and listings may confuse and kill conversions, but won't short clean points kill traffic from Amazon SEO? It can. So I see where you're going with that. What I would say is with shorter bullet points, it may kill Amazon SEO for the amount of total keywords that you're indexed for and you have other parts of your listing that you can be indexed for for those words. So for me, I would say, okay, here's the words that are most likely to convert, and I wanna tear those up in my title, my bullets, my description, and so on. 
the other words that I can't get to or that aren't showing well on my search term reports, I'm going to run content and then rank for those uh, separately. That's the way to do it. You only get so much space on Amazon. So that's why I try to run in parallel on, on Amazon and off Amazon presence because I want to be able to test all these different keywords. You don't know when you first set up your listing. But whether they're short or whether they're long, if they're self-evident, that's the key. If your product has a higher price or if your product has more moving pieces, you might need longer bullets to tell them how it works or if it has like something really unique that you have to explain, cool. That's where I would put that. But if it doesn't require that, I would go shorter. And I would find other means to pick up those other words that may not be as high to convert and run it that way. Does yeah. that make more sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. There you go. Uh, uh, real quick, I believe someone asked, did you have a group that we can join for? Maybe the Mrs. Sly, you want to say the group again? Uh, yes, the group name is Unstoppable FBA. Cool. Simple uh, as that. Uh, it's free, totally free. And what's the name of the tool of flower-like ah, keyword tree organizer? My, that is my <laughs> favorite tool for SEO, uh, for finding content ideas. It's called answerthepublic.com. You can put in your keyword, and it will come up with all the things that people search for on Google. And the cool thing is, that flower that you saw, if I click one of them, I go to Google and I can see all the content that comes up that ranks number one for those questions that are asked. And it not only gives you the questions, it gives you prepositions like comparisons. It gives you uh, also a long tail alphabetical list on the end. And here's the best part, friends. You click download CSV in the top right corner and it gives you a spreadsheet of all the information it just spat at you. Love that tool. I also love that tool. I didn't realize <laughs> that's what they were talking about with the flower thing, but I also love that tool. Uh, how can you protect your organic traffic collecting from groups? So I think maybe he's talking about the, the buyer groups you were creating. Or do you just allow anyone to come in? Is it a private group? Ah, or? It's not a buyer group. Uh, as, far as, as, saying, as far as saying it's a deals group or something like that, I don't run deal groups. I run enthusiast groups. If I'm selling knee braces, and I'm targeting trail runners and ultra marathoners, my group is going to be about trail running and ultra marathoning and all of the things that people want to know to pursue that passion. You guys have to think about something. If I give you mental engagement, if I give you a place to share, if I give you a place to find out more about the things you love, the things that people are buying in there, how many times do, do, are we in one of those groups or are we amongst a peer group with things that we're interested in? We say, hey guys, what about this product? We're going to ask our peers. We need a recommendation. If you're in that group and that you're already visible helping everybody along, you're the recommendation. Because aside from it being a good product, you've trained them that they like your customer service. They like the fact that you're available to them to keep the conversation going. Huge, huge, huge for launching uh, without a big discount. Yeah, that makes total, total sense. Uh, how does content help rank products on Amazon? How does content help rank products on Amazon? If I can bring people in for next to nothing, and then I build a list, well, guess what? We, we aren't talking about a discount to launch. I can say, okay, let's go. My list, if I build it to say 15,000 people, what if I get 10% of those people ready to rock on launch day. That's 1,500 people searching for anything that I want. Give them the term that I want to rank for, and they'll go buy it. That's a full price buy without a rebate. Why? Because I've given them service. When we give money for something, friends, on Amazon, we're expecting a certain satisfaction level. If I give you more than that, only sweetens the deal. Only sweetens the deal. Yeah, so I think what you said earlier about uh, you know building that content and audience yeah. for the product that that's super key. Um, let's see here, this next one. Uh, do you find localization is important? Are you talking to different geos in different ways? I can. Uh, I try to keep my content pretty general. Um, if if I have a product that would be used by um, 
you know, a, a certain regional demographic versus another regional demographic. Like if I had something that's more beach related for warmer climates, I'm not going to run a ton of content and try to target people that are in colder climates, as an example. So in that way, I would. But as far as segmenting, like, content to draw people in for conversion rates, the way that I would do that is I would run a Shopify store with multi-channel fulfillment with Google Analytics attached to the store. Because what's going to happen is as people buy and come through your store, you're going to get a, 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 a dashboard in Google Analytics, and it's going to say what regions are higher converting than others, and the ones that are flops and pulling down your campaigns, you can exclude them. That's how I would do that. Uh, that's great. Uh, do you use subreddits for listening to what oh, people are talking about? I'm a subreddit fiend. <laughs> so, yeah, you can go on subreddits. Let's go back to the example of the sleep aid. If I put in sleep, the, sl the, the subreddits are sleep, they're insomnia, they're, uh, there's all kind of things. What I would do with that is aside from just reading the conversations and trying to get a feel for what people really want, you can take those conversations and comments and you can put them in what's called a frequency analyzer. There are tools online, just type in frequency analyzer, and it will tell you what words repetitively come up. That's an, an, an SEO thing to keep with the theme of the talk. And it's very, very easy to say, hmm, if I'm selling a sleep aid, why does this word valerian root keep showing up? Huh, I might want to think about that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, would you recommend using copywriting for Amazon listings or SEO writing? Which one works better and why? Okay. Uh, so I, for any of you that may know me before the conference, I write a lot. That's actually one of the things I do a lot is, is, is copywriting. For me, copywriting and content writing are two different things. If you think about the peripheral keywords versus the targeted keywords, if I'm writing to convert, that's a different process than if I'm writing to put an image in people's minds of what they can become by buying my product. Very, very different writing. So if we're doing copywriting for a product, my title needs to draw them in and get them to read the rest of the listing. If I'm trying to talk about um, some keywords where I want to rank them for SEO, I want to use it in such a way as to give them the idea of, okay, this is the things that I would do to take me further into my niche or further into my, my passion or whatever it is. And that's very, very different than just trying to convert somebody down a product page. So two different, two different animals there. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think this is a pretty good question. How do you build a team around this kind of operation? A lot of people don't think about how Got it, yeah, absolutely, team, so. absolutely. It's huge, huge, huge. So how to build a team around this kind of operation? Uh, you have to figure out what it is that is important to making money in your operation that only you can do. Straight up. What's the one thing that you have to do that moves the needle on your profits? One thing. You get one. Maybe two. Everything else you need to farm out. For me, my whole operation, I'm only allowed to write and respond to comments and touch people. That's it. I'm not allowed to make the graphics. I'm not allowed to set up the ad accounts. I know how I want them set up, and my media buyers will take care of that. But that workload is offloaded. Because, guys, there are four ways to spend your time. You either have to do, you have to decide for your team, you have to delegate tasks that you can't do and trust your team that they're going to get them done, let them own the, the, the end result, or you have to design how you're going to scale your business. The killer in all of those is deciding. When you onboard a team member, say, this is where I want this to go, figure it out. You, you're the expert, I'm going to let you do that. Like my graphic designer, I just tell him, I said, look, I want to go this direction. Whatever you need to use for that process, go ahead. Sometimes it comes back and I'm like, nope. And that just means i got to communicate differently. But I'm not going to sit over his shoulder and try to decide. Because every minute you try to decide for your team members, you're slowing down your own workflow. So what I would say is, okay, here's the tasks. What's the one or two things that only I can do? 
And once you figure that out, you say, okay, I need to find people with other skills around these other pieces. Because guys, if you can scale your operational capability, you can scale what risk you can take on, and you can then scale what risk you can take for bigger profits. That's how you do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you mentioned uh, Reddit, uh, Answer the Public. Uh, do you use other social sites like yeah. Quora or anything else for keyword yeah, research? Yeah, um, well, you have to think about it. And I, like, like they said before I came up here, I'm a content marketer. So I, I run massive amounts of content, don't want to go too, too deep into it. But I'm on multiple channels. Um, and people use different platforms differently. I don't want people buying my product that just come from Facebook. I don't want people buying my product that just come from Google. You have to think about it. Why do people go to Facebook? Let's use a simple example. People go to Facebook to talk, to share ideas. That's not the reason they're going to Instagram. People go to Instagram because they want to escape the reality they live in, and they want to get ideas for a better them that they can become. They're becoming sick so they can buy the medicine, right? So as far as keywords go, Reddit, Quora, um, Twitter, YouTube, uh, if it's a B2B type product or if it's useful for something like that, you can go to LinkedIn. Or if you've got a really heavy hitting competitor, go to LinkedIn. See, if, see who their connections are. See what content their company is putting out. It give you a lot of insight on what people like about them and what they don't. So yeah, uh, realistically, I, I don't want to go through all of them. I have 30 different sources that I'll plow through digging for keywords and content ideas to test. Awesome. Uh, so final question here. Uh, it makes sense to keep white space to avoid confusion, but how do you balance that with including as many search terms as you can in the description for ranking? You know, I, I know you described it a little bit earlier. That's, that's a fantastic that. question. Fantastic question. What I would say is when you're newer, you're trying to get as many keywords as you possibly can on your listing to where it's indexed. Okay. As you get going and you get a little bit of data, you'll know what keywords are more likely to convert to an order. And I'm sorry, having you know, 60, 70, 80 keywords on my listing, that's, that's nice. But if those aren't going to convert as well as maybe 30 or 40 or 50 for all the different fields I have, what's the big deal about the other 30? Because they're not helping. They actually can pull down my click-through rates and my conversion rates because they might add to the confusion, or they might just be you know, such low converting terms that just because they're there and just because I'm indexed, it doesn't really matter. So I would say prioritize the words that you've done listening for, and you say, okay, these are the trigger words that people are gonna want when they start converting. This is what they're really looking for. Make sure that's on your listing, and you'll know that by listening to your audience first. They'll tell you everything you wanna know. Awesome. I, I totally agree. Thank you. Uh, everyone give Stephen a round of applause. Great speech, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you.